I was really angry at animators for a while for confusing me, but <laughs> I didn't know what to do with myself. Um, but yeah, Belle's really pretty. And even, I mean, most of the time you see like that golden dress, but I really like that French, like, blue, white, apron costume. I was kind of thinking of Belle, like I said. <laughs> so I would want to be Belle. And she's smart, and she can sing, and she goes to the library and uses the ladders. How often do you see a person use ladders at the library? Just them. <laughs> Goals. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Chantel. Um, I was gonna ask the last few episodes where Kevin showed up, he looked like he really wanted to give up. But what do you think was Kevin's main motivation for not giving up and continue continuing what he needed to finish? Well, I think. Kevin's thing has never been about personal interest, you know, like, he, he had his life set out from, like, super organized, um, with his mom and pressure from himself, but I think at some point, through his introduction to the supernatural, he realized that there is so much more at stake than him being successful at, in school, in career, in his own life. Um, you know, there's definitely much more riding on his abilities and uh, the success of translating the tablets and getting that information. So I think by that point, he kind of accepted it that he, you know, essentially just needs to do what he has to do. Otherwise, the consequences would be far greater than he's willing to accept. So I, I think Kevin at that point was just, he was ready to, to take whatever came his way. Thank you. Welcome. We've never had chairs that swivel. This is nice. This is why. Has everyone swiveled? <laughs> Too bad for them. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, hey, I was right. Hi. Uh, my name's Sarah. Uh, sure. I'd be able to build that a little bit. <laughs> so ominous. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> um, okay, so what was your favorite cosplay to do? You know, picking my favorite cosplay is like picking my favorite child if I had children. Um, Gara! Gara, oh my god, Gara's so nice. Uh, I, I like every cosplay for a different reason. You know, every single time I've done it, I've had a, a special memory with it. Gara was definitely, he's my favorite character out of Naruto. And just, like, the story that his character went through and the meeting with his mom. And I have this nice picture with Lauren. Um, it, you know, that means a lot to me. Because, um, you know, I was watching that anime for like 15 years and, you know, that definitely connected with me. Um, Little Mermaid was a lot of fun <laughs> just because of how, how nervous I was before stepping on the stage to what it ended up becoming. Um, I did this costume from the video game Journey and that was at San Diego Comic Con in 2014 and that, that moment was just so awesome. Uh, basically, I went through the entire weekend without telling anyone I was going to be there, and I just crashed the panel in the costume, and, and I spent most of the weekend in that costume trying to meet as many people, and I totally freaked them out, and then when they realized it was me, it was, it was just, it's all about contrast, I guess, so it, that was really nice. Um, what else? Miss Carl Fredersen uh, from Up. That was really fun, just because I, I enjoyed being slow and playing an old person. <laughs> Took me forever to do anything, but no one needed to rush me, so that was nice. Uh, I don't know, I, I feel like anytime you put time and effort into anything, you know, you, it's really, it's really easy to like think of all the reasons why you don't like things or why you would have like, oh, I like this one, it's better than that one because of this, 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 but I, for me, I'm, I try to practice looking at all the positives and why I liked every single one and so so it's hard for me to pick a favorite. Some of you used to ask me, you travel a lot with your favorite city and I could never answer that. I'm like, well like if I had no, so I <laughs> that's an easy answer. That's a, but if I had a favorite place, ninety nine point nine percent of the time I wouldn't be there. 
right? That's just not, that doesn't sound happy, then I should just go there. Well, like every city has something that I really enjoy about it. And so whenever I'm at that city, that's what I'm gonna focus on. And when I go back to the other place, with the other thing that I like, then I'll focus on that. And so I think it's the same with costumes. I just focus on the good and the not so good parts. Hopefully there'll be another costume that kind of fills that void. Does that make sense? Thank you. Uh, my question for you is, do you have any weird uh, party tricks or hidden talents? Um, I got greedy with the gum and I put too many in my mouth. Um, <laughs> do I have party tricks? <laughs> you know, I, I used to have a lot. I was very proud of doing random things in school. Let's see. Um, so I went to circus school as a kid. And that kind of set the base of a lot of random skills. So, you know, we did like juggling, still you know, like playing, trampoline work, trapeze. So we did a little bit of everything. And um, the one thing that I really got into in high school um, during math class was card flicking. So I always had a deck of cards and Gambit was my favorite X-Men. Because he's super badass. And he's French, and we're in French immersion, so it kind of worked out. And I just started flicking cards because I read this magic book that my mom gave me, and that was the only trick that I wanted to learn. And I got really good at like just flicking cards really hard and really far. And um, and then I was, I, I think I, I was a little crazy. I, I hit a friend one day, and he started bleeding on his arm because I got really good at it. And then I wasn't allowed to do it again. <laughs> uh, that's one. Let's see. I feel like I do have a lot. I mean, I used to be more flexible than I am. I used to do a lot of flips and stuff. I used to. Man, do you have? You must have a weird party trick. What's your party trick? Um, I'm double jointed in all my Alright. Let's see this. Oh. Looks like your hand is possessed. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Oh, that's so cool. No, I. No. no. Is, there a, is there a party trick you can teach me? Can I do that? No. Okay, you do have. Yes. Can you do that again? Can I swivel as you do it? Um, maybe. <laughs> ah, okay, alright. Ah. It's that, that little thing at the end. Thank you. Man. I feel like I should have that. Okay, I'll, I can do a belly roll. This, my parents really like this one. So, <laughs> I mean, we all have parents. So every time we go to, <laughs> I quit piano really early. And so, okay, let, 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 let me let me leave this in. So, I have a pretty big family, and my dad has seven siblings. Six of them are in Vancouver, and they all have kids. And, and so we have these big gatherings, and most of them are very musical. And so we do like many family, like I guess concerts and stuff, so like all the children would go and bring pride and joy to their parents and <laughs> and I quit early. So I would go up and I'd do this. <laughs> so if you can imagine like, you know, Beethoven's being played, it's like, alright now it's Osric's turn. <laughs> and that would be it. <laughs> Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, so so me and my brothers were the black sheep of the family. And this is one of the skills that I had. I, mean, I don't even know if it's a skill. I'm like, I'm like, I'm just sucking in my stomach, mom. They're like, just do it again, do it again. You can't play the piano anymore. Just do it again. Like, all right, all right, okay, mom. <laughs> all right, yeah. Crunch. I don't think I ever did it at school, though. It was, it wasn't, I wasn't that proud of it. But. Ah. Hello. Um, my question is, you play a character that has such a hard time with the hand he has been dealt and has such a, a strong spirit but yet seems so hesitant to show it. I want to know if, when you're getting into character, does, does Kevin affect you? Do you have a problem after or before you play Kevin? You know, the thing with acting is, most of the time, every character you play, you know, it's really hard to be completely detached to that character. Like, unless you're, you're you know, you're a character actor and you play these just crazy characters that are completely off of you, but even then, you know, there's always a sliver of you that comes through, a sliver of your personality, because it has to make sense for you, right? So, as an actor, my... I guess my job, I would put it down to empathy. My job is to be able to empathize with this character so that I know, I understand, I believe what's going through this character's thoughts and actions, and, and if I believe it, then it becomes real. Right, and so, you know, you, you look at yourself. You know, I look at myself, and we're, you know, we're one person, and if someone asks you, like, what kind of, what type of person are you? like? Describe yourself. It, it's so hard to just describe yourself because, like, well, when I'm with my parents, I'm kind of like this. When I'm with my friends, I'm kind of like this. When I'm with my best friend, I'm kind of like this. When I'm with that person I don't like, I'm like this. You know, <laughs> we're such a big and varied person. You know, we, we can be so many different types of people. We have our our angry moments. We have our happy, outgoing moments. We have those moments where we don't want to talk to anybody. You know, and so. Um, in preparation for any role, I just, I look at that character and then I look at that part of my life that is closest to that character and I just kind of go in that zone so that when I'm playing that character, I'm already there. And Kevin is, um, I mean, Kevin really does resonate with me because I've, I've gone through a lot of the things that he has and so it, it, for me it wasn't, it wasn't that big of a stretch for me because like I read it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I know exactly where he's coming from. So, did I did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Yeah, but Kevin definitely he's come through such an arc from season seven, eight, and nine, and I've been through all those stages at some point in my life. So it, it was it was really cool to play a character that that goes through such a journey. I, my question. Is uh, Kevin was killed by Gabriel, uh, and he said he was stuck in the veil. So is he still stuck in the veil? And is there any chance we will see Kevin again? Um, I am assuming he's still in the veil <laughs> because I haven't heard anything else. Um, I is, I mean, I think this is a question I should be asking you. Is there, like, what other options does he have? <laughs> Can you, like, after like they found a way to open heaven and get the angels like oh, that's right. and the doctor was away like you know. I guess. I have no idea. I mean I, I like the theory that okay, this this is the thing that I'm pitching. So <laughs> So Kevin Kevin's a student. That is like if Kevin had a superpower, it's it's not really that he can like just read rocks that other people can't. It's <laughs> It's, it's that he's, he's able to study, right? He's, he's able to adapt to the situation, and that's that's what I really like about Kevin. Um, so being in the veil, you know, the first time it really took him a long time and a lot of effort to break through, and he was only able to come through for like a couple of minutes at a time. If you were to if you were to come back, I would like to to see him like, oh my God, Kevin has been doing this because he's been bored, but he's been practicing this so hard that he's he's I mean he's a ghost, but 
He's not, because he's so good at breaking through the veil. Like, he's so good that he can swivel a chair. So, if, I mean, if Kemp comes back, I hope he swivels a chair. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, that would be so good. Hi. Hi. Um, so, I don't know, do you have any, like, great stories of a prank you pulled on Jensen and Jared, or vice versa? Wait, do people pull pranks on them? I mean, they might. Is this a two-way street? You can. I should, I should tell everyone else that. Uh, I, that's a good question. I wonder if people have done it the other way. Uh, Nisha, right. Real but that's probably why he gets it the worst. Like, I feel like the retribution is not worth it. They said Brianna and Kim just did. Uh, they go easy on them. Let's see. No, no, I, I, I think I'm too fearful of what might come. Matt, go. I, oof, that, that wasn't a prank. That was, that was an unfortunate, unfortunate event. Um, and I'm still waiting for that retribution. Now, I... You could always pull a prank on them and like pin on a or something. Actually, that's, that's a great idea. Hold on, I'm, I'm trying to think. I feel like I actually did, but maybe it just didn't go very well. <laughs> now, I'll, I'll have to come back to you. I mean, maybe I'll just go visit Seth and, and I'll figure something out. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Why don't people prank them more? They're 800 people. Yeah, they are kind of scary, aren't they? I mean, now, yeah, see, like, I already broke Jared's arm. I feel like I can't prank him anymore. Like, I feel so bad about that still. I can't. Jensen. Yeah, Jensen. No, you know what? No, Misha's the easiest target. Like. <laughs> yeah, I, I think everyone's just gonna have to be happy with pranking Misha. We'll think of something. Maybe. Maybe if we go to Nicaragua again, I'll put a giant spider in his bed or something. It's okay. They only eat birds. They don't. They don't eat fishes. I'll think about that. I should. I, I should. I'm not, I don't know if I, I'm, I'm that much of a prankster though. I, I never was a prankster. I was always. I was always very serious, and then when it took things too far, then I'd try to laugh it off, and that'd be my prank. Um, I, was not, I was never very good at it. But something to think about. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Haley. Um, I was wondering, if you were out and you met Kevin at a bar, what would you guys do? We would sip on our lemonade all night. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would, I, I've never had alcohol in my life. And I know Kevin just started. So if I'm at a bar, it's because I'm there with friends. And if I saw someone that looked exactly like me, I would probably talk to him. <laughs> well, no, I'd probably yell at him for a little bit. And then, and then we have a conversation. And let's see, Kevin, what, did, what would Kevin drink? Maybe he'd get into bourbon by that point. <laughs> and then we talk about why I don't drink, and then he'd talk about why he drinks. <laughs> and, and then we'd be sad for each other. <laughs> And then he'll tell me that he's a ghost, and then I'll be like, Oh my god, you're so good at breaking through this veil that I can't even notice. <laughs> and then he'd do this. I know. <laughs> because the bars would have swivel chairs. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I was wondering, what was the most difficult scene it was to film and why? <coughs> It was the, my death scene, um, and it was, Supernatural was the closest thing to a regular job that I've ever had, like in my entire life. I went through this long time period where I just applied to different jobs, and um, just because I was finding myself, I didn't know what I wanted to study, and I ended up quitting like 20 to 30 jobs um, in that year, and... <laughs> <laughs> I was really good at getting work. 
Um, because I, you know, I, all I needed to do was trick my way into getting an interview. And once I got into the interview, I was able to just like talk my way into it. Um, and what I, what I did every time was like, oh, I really liked getting the job. I really enjoyed the training. I really liked meeting the people. But after like two, three days, like, I just felt like my entire future just flashed before my eyes. I'm like, I already know what's gonna happen, what's the point? And then I just didn't show up. Um, and then I would apply to the next job. Uh, and what's amazing with that is that it's really good for acting because that's our job, is to audition constantly. And so our job is to go in and audition. And I really enjoyed that. Um, but. It, they're all so temporary, you know, you'll do like one month here, a few days there, a week there, and it's always like start, stop, start, stop, and even, and the one thing I liked about it was that there was always an end, so even if I did this movie, I'm like super excited about it, I'm like, oh, I already know what's gonna happen, because I read the script, and I'd be super bummed that, oh my god, and I, well, at least, it, there's an end date, so I don't have to quit, I'll just, you know, see it through to the end. Um, but Supernatural was the, first and only job that kind of felt like, I don't know, it felt like a regular job. I would go in, I would see the same people, I'd say hi, have breakfast, we'd go to work and we'd go home and then I'd go back the next day and you know, it really felt like an office job, even though it wasn't an office job. Um, and I really enjoyed that and because it lasted for almost three years, you know, I, I just gotten so comfortable with like, Mom, I'm, I'm coming back home, we're, you know, we're doing another episode. You know, there was just a really nice familiarity with it. And so when I did the death scene, it was, you know, it was like, I mean, it, there was some, a few months where I kind of knew, and so prepping that was okay, but just that day, you know, you, the set was noticeably quieter, you know, people weren't talking, you know, it was, it was a little bit of a sad thing, you know, and I was staying by throughout the day, I'm like, yeah, I guess this is it, you know, it was a good run. Um, but the last shot, I had my eyes covered with prosthetics, and so the entire set was pitch black to me. Um, and because people weren't talking much, it was just like quiet. And so I'm just like being led around the set, and I'm like, okay, and they're gonna be here, and then you're gonna fall down. And you know, and the director is like very quiet, he's just like, okay. And then I would just hear Jensen saying, okay. For like three hours, and then and then I got up and you know they let me back out and and then I and I just went home. I, like I, it was it was so hard because like that that was like such a an end like such a big ending that felt like an end. And then after that, like okay, we're gonna bring you back in two episodes. <laughs> like oh okay. Thank you for that. Um, but yeah, that, that was definitely a little bit harder. It was, it was quite sad, but yeah, they, they brought me back. And at some point, Kevin's gonna swivel on the chair. So I'm just, <laughs> this is pretty cool. Yeah. Hi. Hi, I'm Taylor, and my question for you is when you were filming the Hollywood show Supernatural Purity, what was your favorite part of the line? Ooh, favorite part to film or favorite part watching it? Both. Favorite part to film, I, I always really like like shooting on, on location. And so we did this trip to Oregon and it was this tiny little town, super quirky lodge that we stayed in. They played reggae music, they had a reggae concert on a Wednesday night till 2 a.m., which is so weird. <laughs> There was a deer that hung around, his name is Sugar Bob. <laughs> we like, we did all the highway shots there and there's like, this beautiful with trees, but this one stretch that we needed, sometimes the sun would be like, going the wrong way and so we'd have to drive on the left lane, but we'd be like, like lip syncing and so we could look at the road and there's not going to be traffic. <laughs> I was super unsafe, like my stunt background, just like, just ignore this, we can get through this. <laughs> uh, it was, would never be allowed to do that. Um, so that was a lot of fun. In terms of watching it, I, I think it was, it's probably just the, one of the last shots of Jared and Jensen bowing because it was just like a nice, 
ending to it. And, and that's one of the things that I love about the show is that we were able to get all the actors to do this parody of their own show. <laughs> and everyone just go into it. And it, yeah, that's just the special thing about Supernatural and the relationship that like the people involved in the show have with the people who enjoy it is that is that relationship and yeah, just that bow, I think it, it kind of sums it all up into what that means. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Caitlin, and my question is, what's your favorite dance move? <laughs> I demonstrate. Favorite dance move? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I, I was a very quiet and introverted child. Um, I, would, I, would, I would say that I was the strong, silent type of a kid. And I, I say this because, okay, background. So, Cantonese was my first language. And then I went in French immersion, so I learned French. And then English kind of started taking over, we did half English, half French, and then after a while, English became the primary language. But because there were so many different languages going on, when I was in elementary school, going into high school, I didn't really have a firm grasp on any of the languages. And so, you know, when you have trouble communicating, um, you kind of figure out different ways to express yourself. And so for me, um, I had a, a lot of things of bullying, it ended up being very physical, and so I got into a lot of fights. And uh, because of that, I was, you know, dancing just wasn't my thing. So, like, I mean, I would go to the physical dances, so I guess my my favorite move would be this. <laughs> Sometimes I would feel a little crazy, and I'd do this. <laughs> but, I mean, that's like a special occasion. That's someone's birthday. So. <laughs> Do you have a favorite dancer? Okay, come up and show everyone. I'm sure you're going to rock it. I'm going to do this dance. Alright, what you got? It doesn't have a name. Dad? Dad? Okay, it's called Dad. That's, okay, okay, teach, teach you the move. Take your arm, of the other arm. Is that it? Do you do, so is it, do you do it like a lot, like? Uh, oh, it's a, it's a song thing. Oh, what's the song? Um, I forgot. Okay. Well, all right, let's do the dab together. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> and with that said, I really like Square dancing because they tell you what to do, <laughs> or line dancing because it's really organized and you can you can tell what's happening. <laughs> like when the song tells you like step right here, I'm like yeah I can do that <laughs> because I'm an actor. I mean I'm really good at taking directions. Uh, you tell me to freestyle, I'll just freeze. I'm like but I <clears throat> okay. But now I know how to dab. Crazy dances. Right. Okay, what's your favorite dance move? I don't dance. I don't like dances. <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll teach you my crazy move. I call it the knee bend. <laughs> Try throwing in a head bob. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, okay, so hey. <laughs> um, my name is Visha. I wanted to ask if you were stuck in a TV show other than Supernatural, what would it be? Oh, if I was stuck in a TV show. Walking Dead. <laughs> I was thinking that. Why would you want to be in? I would so partner up with Michonne. Um, <laughs> let's see. If I was stuck in a TV show, I really like English medieval culture. So I, I would go. I would Game of Thrones that. 
Yeah, and I really like the cold, so I'd, I'd be in the Black Watch. I'd, I'd hang out with Matt. And then they would probably say some super racist things and I'd end up in a cell, but... <laughs> they didn't know back then! Uh, but I'd be okay with it. I'm like, oh, I'm here! Winter is here! <laughs> Yeah, that'd still be nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think growing up I always read a lot of King Arthur books, and so I always fantasized about being in that, in that era. I mean, I know Asia had its own medieval stuff, but I never really, I didn't watch that as much. When my parents watched it, I just wasn't into it. And so it was, yeah, Game of Thrones really is that kind of thing for me, so, yeah. Put me in medieval England, give me a long sword. That's what you said? Maybe even a horse. <laughs> yeah. That's probably one of my favorite novels. I, I read the series, it was about King Arthur's lineage, and it starts off with his grandfather, and he's a blacksmith, and this meteorite comes, and he, like, the whole thing is just about the evolution of weaponry and how he eventually crafted Excalibur out of this meteorite, which is why it's such a special sword. So nice. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Kendall. Hi, Kendall. Um, oh my gosh, I'm so close to you right now. <laughs> my question is, what's your favorite pose to do? Like, like, what do you mean pose? Uh, like, for a picture or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, do you have a favorite pose? What is it? Okay, all right, come on. Let's see the pose. Do the peace sign? This? What, is that the shocker? No. No. No, that's not. Sorry, what's that one called? Oh, that's just the rocking one. That one. That? This is how you greet people? Hi. Let's do that at the same time. Sure. Do, you, do, you, do you have like a catchphrase that you say while you're doing it? What's up? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> hey. Hi, I'm Rudy. Um, hey, Rudy. It's my understanding that in Dynamite Comics, there's a character in the Red Sonja book based on you. Yeah, there is. <laughs> His name is Osrin. <laughs> about the character and how did that come about? So I have a really good friend by the name of Eric Sturpey and he is a writer at Telltale Games. And, um, and we used to be roommates and he's like really, really involved in the comic book culture. And, uh, and he was just telling me about the Atom, which is, um, which is a DC hero um, by the name of Ray Palmer, but there's another iteration of the Adam where he's an Asian American, or well, he's an Asian guy by the name of Ryan Choi. And so I bought the entire thing and I read it and I loved it. And um, and the writer of that is Gail Simone. And and Eric's like, you should like tweet her or something. And so I did. And uh, and she followed me back and we you know had a little dialogue going. And then I went to. Uh, Emerald City Comic Con, and that's like the con that I started off going to, and I I saw that she was there, and so I went by and I said hi, and you know she gave me more comics, and then we kept talking, and then I got an email from her one day. It's like, hey, Osric, I would like to do a character in your name and likeness. Would that be okay? And I just started like yelling at Eric. I'm like, Eric, I'm gonna do a comic, <laughs> and then I responded. Yes, that would be all right. <laughs> Please, proceed, carry on. Uh, and then she sent me these mock-ups, and they were so good. Um, and she's like, no, oh, Osric the Magnificent. She's like, is that okay? I'm like, yes, that's okay. She's like, you're gonna be the greatest swordsman in the land. She's like, you're still gonna have to lose the Red Sonya, but you won't die. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And yeah, that, that's how it happened. I would bucket list. Yeah, 
so uh, I'm, yeah, Osric the Magnificent is in Red Sonia. Uh, what did you think of the, the story loud? Did you read it? I, I did, I, I really enjoyed it. I was hoping you would uh, tell us a couple of the details about Osric. Um, a very interesting character. She didn't tell me much, except that I was the best swordsman in all of the land. <laughs> and, I mean, once I heard that, like, oof, you can't really go up from there, so if I stop listening now, I won't be disappointed. Um, <laughs> that was really cool, so I, I mean, I, I have the, the collection, and, um, and the, I guess there's always a chance that she's going to bring it back now that it's like a character in the universe, but... Yeah, I, I never, that's one of those things that I never thought would happen, and it did. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering what you like and dislike most about your character. Uh, what I like and dislike, I, I like Kevin's ability to adapt and change with every situation he's been thrown into. Ah, and then he gets on with it. Um, I really like that about Kevin. He, he doesn't complain, I mean he does complain, but he doesn't bitch and moan for too long um, before he just does what he needs to get done. Um, what I don't like about my character is that he, that he's trapped constantly. I, I feel like Kevin sometimes is just an object. Like the first two seasons, uh, when I described my character to someone, I would just be like, yeah, I think I get kidnapped like every second episode. So. Someone takes me, and then someone else takes me, and someone else takes me. Like, I feel like this object... I think I saw a porn movie. That just... <laughs> that kind of was a bit of a bummer, and I didn't realize that until I started to explain what I did. And I'm like, well, people, like, really want me, and so, like... <laughs> and they just keep trying to take me, and then, you know, like, the super hot guy takes me, and the other super hot guy takes me. Uh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Um, uh, just, okay, okay, can we do one more? Can we do one? Guys, hold on, let's do more. Why are you guys going? Okay, let's not end on that. Sorry, quickly, quickly, hurry. Okay, I just had a really great question. Um, so, we, you're actually right now with your mom, like, your ghost and your attached to your brain, your dad's brain. Oh, okay, that sounds great. And so, I'm just wondering if you thought, like, if you t if Kevin goes malevolent, goes evil like Bobby did, start destroying stuff, do you think that your mom would have to take you out, or do you think that Sam and would have to go to take oh you out? Oh my god. Uh, well, Sam and will always be there. Um, but, whew, that's... I mean, you get really cool with that, because you can still school chairs. You have yeah. 10 seconds, Sam, so before the band right, starts if, if Kevin becomes malevolent, I, I hope he's really good at it. I hope he becomes the greatest malevolent spirit in the world, in all of the land. Okay.